privilege this morning by the most high God and also my father in the house, the state pastor. What a great privilege to be a follower of him. A man that followed the master, you can't miss the road following him. What a great privilege this morning. And I pray that as I speak the word, the grace that follow him, the same anointing that follow him, the same power that follow him, we also rest upon me this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you this morning because you are a good God. You are a good God. You are then today because you have something unique for everyone. Show yourself one more time. Thank you, mighty God. We don't only want to be challenged by your word this morning. We desire a definite change. Do it for us. In Jesus' mighty name. Please can we give the Lord a clap. He say, good, 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 good God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, I want us to get the message for the first service. What a blessing. What a blessing. And I pray that as you get that message, it will give you more details concerning what I'm about to deliver this morning. And I pray that that word will be established in the life of everyone in the mighty name of Jesus. If you miss the first service, ensure you get the tape. The Lord bless you as you do that in Jesus' mighty name. Can we give the Lord a clap one more time? It's a good, good, good God. The prophetic focus uh, for this month, godliness is profitable unto all things. And our teaching series for Sunday, part 2b, godliness empowers believers for all run breakthrough. In the book of Psalm 92, from verse 12 to 15, it says, The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. It shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. You see, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the court of our God. They shall bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. And verse 15. He said, to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. There is no unrighteousness in him. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. For everyone that has covenanted with God to walk right this month, henceforth, everything will begin to walk right with you. I say everything will begin to walk right with you. If you believe, let your amen be louder. Please, I want you to know this morning that there is a fiery battle against sin over the life of every child of God. There is a fiery battle. There is a context. But I have a good news for you this morning. You won even before the contest began. You know what the Bible will make it clear to us in the book of Matthew chapter 26 verse 41. It says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. It said, The spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak. He said, watch. 
Now, God is sending a warning, and God will at all times warn us. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, as we engage in the spirit, every activity of the flesh is dropping off in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But these battles are not carnal, but they are spiritual. Every temptation to commit sin is overcomeable. Every temptation. In the book of 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13, he said that be no temptation taken you but such that is common to man. But God is faithful who shall not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But ye with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Listen to me this morning, overcomers are ordained to reign in life. Listen to me, the battle is against your destiny. For everyone that is born again, you have a glorious destiny. And that is what the devil is contesting. But I have a good news for you, you are an overcomer already. I say you are an overcomer already. So overcomers are ordained to reign in life after the order of Joseph and order after the order of Daniel after the order of Abraham I pray for you this morning you shall be the next in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I said to be mentioned you shall be the next in the mighty name of Jesus Christ now we need to know what is godliness if godliness is the part way to profiting then every one of us should be interested in what godness means now godliness is conforming to the laws and wishes of god please i want you to make it clear to us this morning that god works by his principles and laws so for us to be a right with him it's critical that we have a clear understanding what his laws and wishes are. The Bible says in the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, it said, this book of the law, this book of the law, shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate there in day and night, that thou mayest observe to do a According to all, not some, all that is written therein. He said, For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Now, a law means a rule of conduct. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth I pray in the mighty name of Jesus God will not depart from you I say God will not depart from you I say God will not depart from you that's why it's important and crucial for us to conform ourselves to his laws and wishes because that is the pathway to profiting in life that is the pathway to forward movement and advancement in life. Every form of filthiness in our part, I decree this morning as God's servant comes to bless the communion, they are dropping off you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said they are dropping off you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said they are dropping off you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please, I want us to know there are forces of ungodliness. If godliness is conforming to the laws and wishes of God, which is the word of God, then there are also forces called ungodliness, which are the activity of Satan himself, and those forces range to ensure that the destiny of man that God has ordained to be great 
is brought to the lowest. I pray that whatever thing that has brought you to the lowest bottom pit, you are coming out this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And those forces, we must overcome them. We must triumph over them. For the victory of our lives to be total. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, your victory as you take the communion this morning shall be total in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, what are these forces? Number one, the spirit of disobedience. Please, I also want you to know this morning that Satan himself is the originator, is the source of disobedience. Every disobedience has a root in Satan himself. Therefore, every tendency of the spirit of disobedience has a root in Satan and must be rooted out. And I pray for someone here this morning, they shall be rooted out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 2, and you had he quickening who were dead in trespass and sin, where in the past ye walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the here, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. That walketh in the children of, of disobedience. Satan was cast down from heaven because of his act of disobedience. And for everyone that walk in sin, that walk in sin, are also aligned with the same spirit. And this means a life full of running away from God. That means an invitation to resistance to God's instruction. That means making you to yield to self instead of surrendering to God and desiring His will in all your life. To be disobedient is to sin and rebel against God. And that is the exact thing that Satan did. The same that Satan did. And it was brought down to the bottomless pit. Listen to me, you have a great destiny. No devil will bring you down. No act of adultery and fornication will bring you down. No strife will bring you down. No act of Satan will bring you down. If you believe, let your amen be louder. The Bible makes it clear to us in the book of John chapter 10 verse 10. It said the devil has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So the intention of Satan is to steal your destiny. Is to kill your destiny. Is to destroy your destiny. So each time you walk contrary to the truth, or each time you run away from the truth when you are confronted with what? Is an intention of the activity of the devil being run in the life of that individual. An invitation to resist in God's instructions when you are confronted with the truth. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. That spirit that makes you run away from the truth drop off you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That spirit that makes you no one to hear the truth when it comes is dropping off you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you believe, let your amen be louder. The Bible also makes it clear to us that God is set to make a change in our lives. The question this morning, are you also set for a change of story? In the book of Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 27, it said, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my status and ye shall keep my judgment and do them 
So when you surrender your life to Jesus, one of the things you surrender to is the Spirit of God that keeps you away from the spirit of disobedience. When you give your life to Christ and begin to obey Him, the Bible says this in, in His Word in John 6, 63. But be of it, He said, the word that I've spoken unto you. He said, it is the spirit that quickened. He said, the flesh profited nothing. He said, the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So each time we step into obedience, we step into the spirit of God. We step into the life of God. And that is required for us to obey God. Jesus said unto you, he said, look, I'm about to step out, but I will send unto you an helper. And who is that helper? The Holy Spirit. So each time you step into obedience, you are stepping into the realm of the Holy Ghost, your helper. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever takes you away from God, is off you from today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever takes you away from obeying God is taking you away from the Holy Ghost. And that is our helper. We need the help of the Holy Ghost to live a victorious life. We need the help of the Holy Ghost to live a life of more than a conqueror. To live a life of more than a conqueror. He said, I will put upon you my spirit. I will put upon you my spirit. And you will begin to walk in my laws. Every step of obedience is a step into the realm of your helper, the Holy Ghost. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my status. And ye shall keep my judgment and do them. Whatever thing that makes you to walk contrary to God's instructions and laws is off you forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you believe, let your amen be loud. If you believe, let your amen be loud. Another of the forces of ungodliness is a lying spirit. In the book of 1 Kings, chapter 22, verse 22 down to 23. And the Lord said unto him, We are with. And he said, I will go forth. I will go forth. And I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt pursue him and prevail also and go forth and do so. And now, therefore, behold, the Lord had put a lying spirit in the mouth of those that prophet, and the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. This was the story of King Ahab that refused to listen to God. The same was the occurrence concerning Adam and Eve. God made them in his own image and in his own likeness. They were God. And the liar appeared in the garden and told them, you will be like me. They were already God, you will be like God. I want to make you like God. The devil deceived them. That's why I don't know what Satan is speaking concerning your life. You won't make it. I will see how you will succeed. You won't marry this year. And you keep listening to the lie of Satan. Every listener, listening here to the deceitfulness of devil makes you your child, the child of Satan himself. Adam and Eve were ordained to dominate over Satan, but they accepted the lie of Satan, and Satan dominated over them. Listen to me, you have a year of dominion this year. God's word is ever true. You know what he said in the book of John Chapter 6, verse 63, it said, Look, the word that I've spoken to you, they are the life you require. They are the spirit you require. They are the life you require. Every other thing is the lie of the devil. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 5 and 6, Thomas asked Jesus, Now that Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. 
how can we know the way? When Jesus was about going, he was talking to the disciples in parables. And I believe Thomas summoned the courage to ask the question, Lord, now that you are going, what becomes of all? Look at verse 6. And Thomas said unto him, Lord, I have, and Jesus answered and said, I am the what? The way, the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Whatever word that is contrary to God's word is not the truth concerning your life. It's not the way concerning your life. Listen to me. God is ever true concerning your life. He will never change his mind. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Every word that God has spoken, the devil will not steal it from you. I say Satan will not steal it from you. I say Satan will not steal it from you. If you believe, let your amen be loud. So Satan himself is the great liar. And look at Psalm 101 verse 7. He said, He that walketh with Satan also, also walketh deceit, and shall not dwell within my house. Everyone that disobey me, they are workers of iniquity. They are workers of iniquity. And they also walk at the seed like their master Satan. And shall not dwell within my house. He said, he that tell a lie is like Satan his master. And shall not tarry in my sight. Shall not tarry in my sight. That is, we end in the bottomless pit the way Satan ended. Listen, you have a great destiny. No devil will tamper with it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. The target is your destiny. It won't get you in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. The target is your great future. It won't get you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The target is your great tomorrow. It won't get you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what your family name has been called. But God wants to start a new thing through you. I don't know how Satan has sat on your family, how we are sat on your career, how we are sat through the activity of ungodliness. Please, you need to step out into godliness. You need to step out and make a difference in your generation. You need to step out and make a difference in your family. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. As you take a step for righteousness, God is making you a surprise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say God is making you a surprise in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe, let your amen be loud. Please also, we must know how to overcome ungodliness. If God has a glorious destiny for you and is being contested by the activity of Satan, through the spirit of disobedience and through a lying spirit contesting your glorious destiny want to abort your glorious destiny by stealing by killing and destroying your destiny through the spirit of disobedience and a lying spirit so how do we overcome and end our journey as more than a conqueror number one we must crave for the endowment of the spirit of holiness. Please, I want you to know that at salvation, we surrender our life to Jesus. We made an oath to surrender our life to Jesus. So, at salvation, we handed everything about ourselves to him. And one of the things we surrender to is the Holy Spirit. Which is in charge of our lives. Which is in charge to ensure the fulfillment of God's word and agenda in our lives. So the more we crave to obey him, the more the manifestation of the spirit of the holiness manifested in our life. And the spirit of holiness is the Holy Spirit. So the more we surrender to Jesus, the more we pay attention to him, 
the more we pay attention to conforming to his word and his wishes, the more the manifestation of the spirit of holiness in our lives. And we can see that being manifested in the life of Jesus in the book of Matthew, in the book of Revelation, sorry, Romans chapter 1 verse 4, and declared to be the son of God with power. That was Jesus. Romans chapter 1 verse 4. And was declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Jesus lived a life of obedience. No wonder he kept saying, I don't do anything except it is commanded. He never took any step. He never did anything throughout his journey without God. No wonder the spirit of holiness was full in him. The spirit of holiness was manifested in him. You can't take a step for Jesus and you don't manifest the spirit of holiness. You can't take a step towards his laws and wishes. And the spirit of holiness is not manifested in your life. In the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 6, it says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled with the spirit of holiness. Blessed are they which thirst and hunger, which thirst not after unrighteousness, who thirst after God's laws, who thirst after the instruction and the wishes of God. He said when you do that, the hand of God, the pure hand of God, become manifested in your life. Number two, how to overcome ungodliness. We must cultivate godly habit Colossians 3 verse 8 it says but now ye also put off all this hunger wrath malice blasphemy filthiness communication out of your mouth and verse 9 lie not to one another seeing that ye have put off the whole man with his deed now listen to me the devil throws those habits to you in order for you to lose your status in god everyone that is born again you have an inheritance with god you have a right inheritance with god but what makes things wrong is the activity of ungodliness and those lists are activity that push God out of our lives and look at verse 10 says and I put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him and verse 12 Romans 14 verse 12 look at what Romans 14 verse 12 say he said so then, every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Romans chapter 14 verse 12. So every one of us will give account. Please, I want us to remember that there is a day called tomorrow. There is heaven and there is hell. Every activity of ungodliness and the journey in hell. And every activity towards God and your journey in heaven. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, you will end your journey well. I say you will end your journey well. So as we cultivate godly habit, covenant hour of prayer, you are there. Operations, you are there. Services, you are there. These are godly habits that move you forward. And as you begin to take steps in them, the Holy Ghost and the life of God begin to walk in you. The spirit of holiness begin to walk with you. You begin to do right. You begin to say right. You begin to take right actions towards God that makes your destiny fulfilled in righteousness. And the next one is follow after righteousness. How to overcome ungodliness. Number one, I say you must crave for the endowment of the spirit of holiness. Number two, we must cultivate 
godly habit. Number three, follow after righteousness. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 51, verse 1, it says, Akin to me ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock, hence ye are horn, and to the horns of the pit, hence ye are digged. And look at what verse 2 says. It says, Look unto Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah that bore you, for I call him alone, and I bless and increase him. And verse 3, For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He shall comfort away places. He will make a wilderness like Edom. And a desert like the garden of the Lord, joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus. That becomes your inheritance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me, when you follow the ways of God, things become right with you. Things are wrong because you are on the wrong path. Because you are on the wrong path. Things become right when you follow God. Now look at Psalm 100 verse 3. Psalm 100 verse 3. Please can you put it on the screen. Psalm 100 verse 3. He said, Know ye that the Lord is what? Is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are a people and the what and the sheep of his pasture. So when you follow God, when you follow his instructions, things become right with you. I pray for you from today, things will become right with you. I say things will become right with you. I say things will become right with you. In the book of First Timothy chapter 6, verse 11. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. Follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. So when you step into this habit, you become right with God. When you flee from youthful lust, he said, follow after righteousness. And what does it mean to be right? It talks about faith. It talks about charity. It talks about peace. These are the work of righteousness. It said with them that call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. These are the steps that make your life right. These are the steps that make things right with you. These are the things that make your business work right. These are the things that make your career work right. These are the things that make your endeavor work right. So as you follow after them, you follow after godliness, you follow after faith, love, you follow after patience and meekness, you flee from youthful lust, you follow after faith, charity, peace. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, things will begin right with you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now the next is engage the power of the blood for your rescue. Engage the power of the blood for your rescue. How to overcome ungodliness. God's servant will be stepping up in some minutes. And as we engage the blood of Jesus through the communion and the flesh of Jesus. Whatever thing contending with God's agenda in your life is dropping off in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You must fulfill destiny in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever thing contending with your greatness is dropping off in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Zechariah chapter 9 verse 11, it says, As for thee also, it says, By the blood of thy covenant, I have sent thee thy prisoner out of the pit wherein there is no water. I don't know the pit the enemy has put you. As God's servant step up this morning, you are coming out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As God's servant come up to bless the communion, you are stepping out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
And verse 12 says, Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today, today, not tomorrow, I declare, I will render double unto you. If you are the one, can you shout a louder? Amen. Amen. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the blood of thy testimony. And they loved not their life unto death. They became victorious. That's Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. They overcame Satan. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. By the blood, by the blood of Jesus. As you take the blood and the flesh, you are stepping to that realm in the mighty name of Jesus. I say you are stepping to that realm in the mighty name of Jesus. If we need to live right, it's important we also know what it offers us. What does godliness offer us? Conforming to the laws and wishes of God, what does he offer us? We are going to be looking at certain benefit of ungodliness. Sorry, of godliness. If ungodliness bring destiny down, if ungodliness truncate the fulfillment of God's agenda in a man's life, if ungodliness steals a man's destiny, if ungodliness kills a man's destiny, if ungodliness destroys a man's destiny, then what is godliness has to offer? Benefit of godliness, which include number one, access to fresh unction. Access to fresh unction. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 28, he said, Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. That shall not be you in Jesus' name. And look at what Luke 5:35 says. And no man put it new wines into new bottles. Yes, the new wine will burst the bottles and be split, and the bottle shall perish. But new wine shall be put into new bottles, and the boat shall be preserved. The boat shall be preserved. He said, No man also having drunk old wine straightway desire new for he said the hold is better listen to me we need we need fresh unction for fresh breakthroughs the anointing for last month is not enough to sustain this month so the more we keep taking a step of godliness the more the freshness thank god for the unction for yesterday you need a new one for today. That means you need a new life of obedience today to release the blessing for today. So each day we keep going. We keep moving in a lifestyle of godliness. The Bible says the path of the righteous is as of a shining light that shineth and shineth and shineth and shineth. And as we keep taking step for jesus the unction that make total victory we keep coming in the mighty name of jesus christ i pray that the unction upon your life will never dry in the mighty name of jesus christ they shall ever be fresh and fresh and fresh in the mighty name of jesus christ another benefit of godliness is supernatural prosperity supernatural prosperity in the book of malachi Chapter 3, verse 1 to 4, Behold, I will send my angels, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, and even the messengers of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide, abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeared? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a filler soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And shall purify the son of liver and punch them as gold and as silver. 
that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. He said, then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old and as in the former years. Listen to me. Each time you take a step for Jesus, every seed that you sow in taking a step for Jesus is multiplying back in return to you. That's why the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18, it says, Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth the power to make wealth, that he may what establish his covenant which he has sworn. So when you keep taking the right step towards God, it keep opening your financial heaven. I pray for you today, your financial heaven will not stop opening. I say your financial heaven will not stop opening. I say your financial heaven will not stop opening. In Psalm 112, he said, praise ye the Lord. He said, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delay greatly in his commandment. He said, his seed shall be mighty upon the house. He says, the generation of the oppressed shall be blessed. He said, wealth and riches shall be found in his house. And his righteousness endureth forever. He say he had dispersed, he has given to the poor. He say his righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted like with honor. He said the wicked shall see it and be grieved. He say he shall garnish with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. You become untouchable walking right with God. Not only that God prospers you, the prosperity and the increase in your life is preserved. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, you will not only be blessed, your generation before you shall be blessed, the one after you shall be blessed, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. By the reason of your right walk with God, everyone around you shall be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The benefit of working right with God, it also engender all run breakthroughs. And we can see that in the life of Daniel. But Daniel proposed in his heart, in the book of Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, but Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the Enoch that he might not define himself. And Daniel became great in verse 17. He said, as for these children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learnings and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. And verse 21 of the same chapter of Daniel chapter 1 and Daniel continued even unto the first year of the king of Cyrus. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus as you begin to take a right step you keep breaking through in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There was an whole run. Daniel could not be stopped by the reason of his life right living. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, you become unstoppable in the hand of Satan in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say you become unstoppable in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me, the right, the life for God is the life, right, life for your life. The life for God is the life you take for your life. When you take a step for Jesus, you are taking a step for your life. You are taking a step for a great tomorrow. You are taking a step for a glorious tomorrow. You are taking a step for a glorious tomorrow. Whatever thing that want to tamper with your future, as you take a step for Jesus, they are dropping off forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say they are taking, dropping off you forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There's someone here this morning who wants to say yes to Jesus. You want to start a new beginning. 
ungodliness keep pushing you down the agenda of satan is to steal your greatness is to kill your greatness and destroy your greatness every child of god has a seed of greatness in him but the devil has a target to kill it to destroy it but when you take a step for righteousness you become secured from the activity of satan god wants to make you a name in your generation god wants to bring you out and give you a name in the business sector in your career sector in your family in your community but you need to take a step for him i pray for you today as you take a step for jesus and leave satan and his activity your greatness become inevitable in the mighty name of the jesus christ the blood of jesus is the purging blood neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us verse 13 for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify to the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. The blood of Jesus purges, just like when you take any medicine, it purges, it removes any unwanted thing from your system. That seed of sin. That is making you disobey God by this communion today. It shall be put off in the name of Jesus. As we partake of this communion, every spirit at war with the spirit of God in us shall be subdued in the name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet and speak unto God. Lord, as I partake of this communion, purge me. Purge me, Lord. Push me for my every unrighteousness. As I partake of this communion, let your cleansing blood cleanse me from every dead work. In the name of Jesus, by this communion, let every taste for sin die in my life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. This table is blessed. Lord, uh, it becomes your blood, your purging blood, your sanctifying blood. Let it sanctify us from every dead world. In the name of Jesus, by this communion, the life of God is ignited into every soul. Every effect of sin over your life is destroyed in the name of Jesus. This table is blessed and sanctified in Jesus' name. Every lying spirit is caused forever in the name of Jesus. The power to live a godly life is released unto you in the name of Jesus. As you stay following after the things of the Spirit, I command every blessing of godliness become your portion in the name of Jesus. This month, you shall experience God in a strange way in the name of Jesus. Every consequences of sin that is at work in your life is reversed today in the name of Jesus. You will serve the living God in the name of Jesus. This commission shall appear to you this week in blessing. In the name of Jesus, favor will hit you on every side this week. Somebody somewhere will tell you congratulations this week. In Jesus' mighty name. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I have dominion. And I take dominion. Congratulations. God bless you.